welcome to Sculpture Studios, a commissioned project today from a client called Lou Sexty. Very much an artist in his own right, Lou's background in acting, directing, painting, singer-songwriting and sculpture firmly embeds him in the creative world, and the creative world, it appears, seems to have given something back this time. The story behind this project is that Lou came across something that caught his eye buried in the sand on a beach. Something compelled him to dig around and uncover what was to be this gnarled, rusty piece of what looks to be part of a motorcycle. Go on, Aiden, grab another hunk of clay there. Yeah, that's it. This captured his attention as it resembled a horse head in some sort of post-apocalyptic deterioration of metal and rust. Sometimes we can't explain how or why something captures our attention or inspires us in an indescribable sort of way, and perhaps those are the best pieces of art, just things that we're inexplicably drawn to, and this was certainly the case for Lou. He's looking to have this moulded so it can be replicated exactly as it is, warts, rather rusty bolts and all. Naturally, as metal this is rather heavy as a piece of wall art, so the fact that we're going to be replicating this in glass fibre should serve the purpose of a lighter weighted sculpture much more effectively. We've started off by creating a clay wall around the edge of the sculpture. This will catch all of the runoff silicon rubber, will create a thick wall, as well as hopefully stopping too much of the rubber from running underneath. Clay has also been added to some of the more extreme tight spots that will be a little too problematic for the mould, and this ensures the pattern can actually be extracted later. Even though we're creating a mould from one piece of rubber, built up in progressively thicker layers, the fibreglass jacket of the mould is going to split into a couple of sections. This is for ease of getting this apart, although, as you can see, it's always a tough process with more intricate pieces like this, with a lot of tight spots and a lot of detail. The fibreglass jacket has bolt points along the flanges so it can be joined back together, and this jacket ensures that the rubber retains the correct shape when it's laid back inside. Here at the studio, during a hot day or during more labour intensive processes, there comes a point which we call crumbling, and it's where you've worked yourself up to a state that you need to shed a layer, and that's also what Jess is demonstrating here. She's crumbled. See why this is kind of taking so long just to carefully get this off. Obviously, very knolled, and there's bits where the silicon is catching a little bit. Um, and if I bring you to looking here, you see where the silicon's kind of made itself a little bit of a trap there. It's not a problem, it just means really, really carefully getting your fingers in and just peeling it back all the places where it could be an issue. And just really carefully pulling it out. Try and still not to damage any of this sculpture that we've taken the mould off. And just let it come out in its own time, just really carefully. And sometimes you can hear the mould literally pop when it's come out of a good piece where the suction's come away. Um, luckily with silicon, um, in this case it's not too bad for static. Sometimes you get moulds that as well as having uh, a lot of suction on them also have static. It can give you a bit of a shock as you're trying to pull them off, but not having too much problem with this one. Um, just obviously looking out for any sharp edges, I don't know if you can see. Um, it's weathered quite beautifully with all the rust, but obviously this is still metal and we still have to be aware of that. Um, and there's obviously a lot of little sharp bits, so yeah, just very, very carefully, very slowly trying to get this off. And a lot of the pieces that are quite weak have managed to stay intact quite well. It's really picked up that really good sharp detail of all these bits. And unfortunately you can see a little bit where the mould, the silicon came under the nose. Um, so that will make it 
a little bit more interesting for moulding, but it shouldn't be a problem overall. So yeah, time to clean up. Isn't that right, Kevin? Yeah. Isn't that right, Aiden? What's that? It's time to clean up, isn't it? Yes, carefully. Very carefully. carefully. Oh, good. Bye. So here we have the original model and we're just going over with a fine tooth comb to make sure that any clay and rubber is cleaned out of the tight spots. We're generally tidying everything back up to more of its original state. Now I'm very conscious of the fact that we don't actually have any footage of the gel coat or the fiberglass casts being made. So I'm just going to distract you with some lovely images showing the finish on the original. Oh my look at that finish that we need to achieve once these have been cast. Rather than going over with iron filings and vinegars or solutions where each shape might naturally oxidise differently over time, we're giving this a paint finish instead. This way we have complete control over the final look, the artwork remains the same as it ages, and can always be changed or touched up at a later date if needed. Jess is gradually building up in multiple layers, each step of the way getting closer and closer to matching the original artwork. One of these is the real McCoy, the real piece of metal, and the other two are bits of fiberglass painted up to look like the metal. We're looking at this kind of structure, and we're finding it actually quite hard to see what is metal and what's fiberglass. We'll put the client to the test when he comes in to see if he can tell. But I think we've got a good um, representation of the whole thing as bits of art. I think you'll be very pleased with them. We was going to stick some iron filings on and uh, rust them up and all the rest of it, but that would have changed the original sculpture in, um, in terms of detail, we, because we, we would have been adding certain sections. But by painting it, we're not adding anything apart from a little bit of paint. But all the detail in here certainly looks like rust to us. And without me actually tapping them, Still not sure. I think that this is a metal one. Yeah, that's a metal one. But we can't tell. So, all in all, I think we've got a good, good copy. With everything now complete, it's time to invite Lou down to the studio to see the finished work. I think we managed to get this all done in good time for him. Not that there was any particular need or a tight deadline or anything like that. And what's more, he was more than happy with the end result. There must be something visceral about this piece that really speaks to or intrigues him, so now having three of them, well, surely that's just three times better, right? The advantage of taking a silicon rubber mould is that if Lou were ever to go on to sell these, perhaps in galleries like many of Lou's original artwork, there's a possibility for more to be created later down the line. Now that the cost and the setup of the mould has taken place, Lou simply says how many casts he would like, and whether he's ordering on a 1, 2 or 10 cast basis, we're now well versed in making these for him. He had a chat with Aiden at the studio about the possibility of replicating these in different colours and varying the finishes just for a different look. It's great to work with artists that share a passion for sculpture and a passion for 3D art, and in cases like this, someone who not only knows what they want, but know they can come back to us with new ideas in the future. It's always a great feeling to build good work in relationships, have projects go smoothly, and have a happy client at the end of the day, and that really ticks a big box for us. Thank you very much to Lou Sexty for finding our studio and entrusting us with this project. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below, and for all of our true diehard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos, so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support, 
However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.